never ever assume that you're an easy child to parent. I can say with almost absolute certainty that this is a mistake that each and every one of us have made at some point in our lives, whether you're already an adult or you're in your late youth, um, a teen, a preteen, or you're just a toddler at this point. And I, <laughs> I don't know how you'd be watching this on YouTube, but yeah, I can say with very a lot of certainty that you have made the mistake of thinking and assuming that you're not that difficult of a child for your parent to raise, right? You always look at the situation from the perspective of my parents are blessed to have me and they should be treating me better. This makes me think of, you know, those teen cartoons or teen films where you have this teenager being dropped off at school by a parent and then they get dropped off in front of their friends or let's say maybe at times it's their bullies and they'll give the, 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 they'll give the teen a kiss on the cheek and then they'll get laughed at at school or maybe they'll drop you off and say, I love you and now you have to say it back because at home that's how things are done. But you don't want to say it back because, I mean, it's embarrassing, Right. But if you think about it from the parent's perspective, like this is a person who spends their entire life and every single day of their life making sure that you have a home to go back to, that you have food on the table, and they try their utmost best with the resources that they have um, and also with the knowledge that they have uh, based on how they were raised to give you the best life and grooming and, and, and safety that they can possibly provide. And now all they're doing is dropping you off at school and saying, I love you. And you're like, ugh, mom, <laughs> you know, um, I don't like this. Now, I, I really want us to continue with these conversations we've been having about empathizing with parents, because when you look at it from their perspective, it's much like when you walk into a grocery store to buy, let's say, a drink. If, if you are the store manager, let's say you're the store manager and a customer walks in and they go into your refrigerator and pull out a drink and then they drink it and decide that, nah, I don't like this drink. And then they put it back in the fridge without paying for it. And then they go into the chips aisle and they open up the chips and eat the chips and decide, ugh, this is actually not my favorite chips and they just throw it on the floor. Or they take a bottle of tomato sauce and break it on the floor, which... I must have admit I've done at a point in my life. I was playing with the trolley and I turned a corner the wrong way and a bottle of tomato sauce uh, uh, fell out of the trolley and broke. And the store manager or the store owner cannot, if he's a person who wants to run a business in good faith and with good practice, right? They cannot force you to pay for that because at the end of the day, they want you to become a customer who feels safe and secure to come back to their store. Now, I want you to take that, that very example and look at it from the perspective of your parents. Like, think about the situation, that they, the, the circumstance that they are under. Because from when you were born, you know, you were crying, you were waking up every three hours having to be fed a bottle. They were getting sleepless nights because of you. And then you became... You entered, you know, your toddler years and they, they had certain challenges. You were peeing the bed at some point, right? You, they were feeding you food that you would spit out and then be like, ugh, I don't want this. Or you would cry over the fact that instead of wanting to drink water, you want to drink a Kool-Aid, which is very unhealthy for you, like Coca-Cola or Fanta or whatever the case may be. And then you grew older and you had, I mean, teenagers are some of the rudest people I come across, right? You'll greet them and then they'll greet you with this look that does not feel very welcoming. And and that's what parents have to go through. That's what they have to face. Like they'll 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 teach you the most basic of chores and ask you to take out the trash, to wash the dishes. I mean, you forget, right? During that time when your parent is saying, take out the trash, wash the dishes, what you are not mindful of, and this is very important, is the fact that when they are asking you to do that for just a couple of minutes and then come back and enjoy the TV or whatever the case may be or play your games or whatever, when they say, when you get home, start with your chores before going to enjoy yourself and make sure that you're responsible enough to focus on your homework. What you're not considering is the fact that they've had a much tougher day than you will 
you will not experience the kind of toughness they experience for like more than 10 years considering where you're at right now right if you're maybe let's say in primary or high school or even in varsity like when you get to varsity there's a lot of responsibility that you carry on your shoulder because now you have to look out for yourself you have to make your own food you have to you know figure out a lot of things for yourself but i can tell you now and i'm saying it in hindsight that it is not even as close as what your parents have to go through, having to keep a job, having to meet deadlines at work, having to be at times afraid that they might be laid off or fired at work and not even know how they're going to be paying for your school fees or your tuition. These are such deep problems that your par parent is not even allowed to complain to you about. But with them being in that circumstance, you feel you have every right to criticize them. And you know, one of the things that I, I really empathize with parents when it comes to this, if you have a friend and their parent bought them a bike, I was in this situation, right? I have, to this day, never owned a bike in my entire life. I've never owned a bicycle. I've always ridden friends' bicycles or a bicycle that I, ro I, I was riding because of an event I went to um, and there were bikes there and we needed to, you know, you know like tourism type things. I have never owned a bicycle in my entire life. And I've always wanted one, especially when I was a teen or a preteen. I wanted to have a bicycle because it was the coolest thing ever. I remember here uh, in South Africa, we had this show called Dynamite Dekloof Dudes, Triple D, right? And th it, the whole show was based around these cool kids. I think actually one of the Squatter Camp members were on that show, if I remember correctly, um, right? Like it, it was about these these bunch of cool kids who traveled around their their community and their neighborhoods on their bikes and they went through a number of different conundrums right they needed to face certain obstacles and go through certain adventures and it really made me want a bicycle even more and i'm sure that as i'm saying this you're also relating to that because many of us have these stories where our friends today <laughs> today most of us that bicycle what was a bicycle for me for you might be a phone today right because many of us want smartphones at very young ages when you don't even know what that is exposing you to and when your parent says you're not ready for a smartphone and even though your your, your friend's parents bought them a smartphone I mean I grew up for most of my teen years and, you know, 17, 18, without actually owning a phone. Um, and, and I remember how it felt, especially seeing a lot of my friends owning cell phone devices that were far more advanced than my one was. Um, I really wanted to catch up. I don't want to lie. I really wanted to catch up. But at the same time, I needed to understand that this was something my mother couldn't afford. And my mother got me used to this at a very young age. It's the reason that I didn't really give her much of a hard time for not owning a bicycle. Uh, but even with me, right, being a, a looking back, even with me being a, a relatively understanding teen, like I didn't throw tantrums or anything like that. I wasn't the kind I actually I'm lying I did throw tantrums I used to cry a lot when I didn't get what I want but my mom was very diligent with her discipline so it, it sort of balanced me out quite well but my point is this if I think back to when I was a teen I remember that I, I was an inconvenient child to, to parent. I, I remember, I can remember. For example, when I cried, I used to cry loud. At that time, I'm crying for something so trivial, like going to the store and buying some sweets or chips or something like that. And, and I was raised by a single mom. So you can imagine just how much stress I brought to her life, considering the fact that she was a teacher who still had to think about making sure that bills are paid all four of my siblings go through school. All of us have something to eat at night. Um, there is a lot that she had to carry on her shoulder. Now, granted, right, I have to take a pause and say this here. I am, uh, I do agree that parents themselves have to take a lot of accountability for the decisions they've made. If you're a parent and you had a child that you birthed into this world without considering the fact that you don't have the finances for that child, that is something that you have to own up to. That's a decision and a mistake that you made, I believe. Now, 
I might be wrong and there might be someone who sees things differently, but I believe in ta- in being accountable for your decisions. And I don't think that's a wrong thing to to do. Um, and as and, and in saying that, if you're ch- you have a difficult child or if you as a teen feel like you deserved a better life, I mean, all of us wish we were born into rich families, but we know how unrealistic that is. So at the very least, we hope that we're born to parents who are wealthy or well off. Let me not even use the term wealthy, just well off enough, you know, for us to live our lives in, in with a certain level of safety and security. We know that we have a meal every day and every now and then we can go to the movies and go to a McDonald's or a Burger King or whatever the case may be. We all wish to be born in such circumstances, right? But unfortunately, that's not the cards that all of our parents are dealt, right? And we have to, to some degree, empathize with that. And I think it's a very godly thing that even if your parents have made the mistake of having you at a time and in a circumstance and a situation where they cannot afford you in terms of financially, but more importantly, they cannot afford you in terms of time. That's a very big one, right? When you have a parent who cannot be there for you, who cannot check on you emotionally, who cannot ask you how your day was, and as a result, you're always complaining to your friends. What, 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 I'm, what I'm really trying to do with this conversation is not to make excuses for those parents, but rather to give you the opportunity and, and, and to, to challenge you to take them a, a moment and empathize with them. Just look at their situation from their perspective. Just think about just how, how inconvenient it was when you were born and they had to wake up every two to three hours just to make sure that you're well fed. Like, think about that throughout the night. This is not just afternoon. They had to get up every three hours and make sure that you're fed and that your nappy is changed. And then you got older and they now had to worry about you wetting the bed and always making demands that you don't want to, you know, um, um, drink water. Instead, you want to drink Coca-Cola or Fanta or wh- whatever fizzy, um, um, unhealthy drink you were into. And the fact that you didn't want to finish your vegetables, you only wanted to eat them Get straight to the meat, you know, and all of those things. Those are stresses they that, that they had to deal with. And it was very difficult for them, your parents, to communicate to you just how important it was for you to have a healthy meal, for you to live a healthy lifestyle. And here's a big one, right? It, it was very important for them to communicate to you why you, you, you currently don't need a cell phone and you should actually shouldn't own a cell phone because cell phones are very, very addictive. They're very addictive and they expose you and open you to a very dangerous world. Um, and I'm saying this as someone now who is working, I'm an adult and I can look at my life in retrospect and I can say in my adult life, right, being in a position where I can get myself a phone at any time if I were to lose my phone, being in that position, I can say to you with confidence that I definitely would have rather, looking back, I would have rather had a parent who decided not to especially give me a smartphone. Back when I was growing up, when I was in my teens, we didn't have smartphones. So giving a child a phone made sense. But nowadays, I, I really empathize, especially with those parents who have to compete with other parents, right? Those parents who get their kids iPads and get their kids bicycles and get their kids all these fancy things. And now your parents have to keep up with that because it creates a desire within you. Um, and, and those are the things that make you a not so easy child to parent. So it's important for us to reflect on that. The fact that I am not an I was not an easy child to parent. I was I was I used to go out and come back late at home and my mother would do so much to get me to come back home on time. You can imagine having to balance worry, like being worried about where your child is, while at the same time you're angry because you don't want them to continue doing this habitually because it's dangerous for a 12-year-old to go and play and come back late at night. So it, it's so important for us to understand and also settle it within our hearts that we're not very easy kids to raise. <laughs> this is so important, right?